or today's topic of discussion is corneal topography. History of corneal topography. In early 17th century, Shiner used reflection of marbles from the cornea as perhaps the earliest corneal topography. Placido's disc was a major advancement in the late 19th century. Placido disc has stood the test of time and the current Placido-based topographers work on the same principle of assessing the reflection of a concentric set of black and white rings from the convex anterior surface of the cornea. Recent advances in the technology use scanning slit methods for assessment of elevation data and incorporation of distortion-free Scheimflug photography techniques. Uses of topography. Corneal topography is most commonly used for the following purposes. Refractive surgery, to screen candidates for normal corneal shape, patterns and ruling out suspicious or keratoconic patterns. Post-operatively, topography can help to assess the dioptric change created at corneal level, thus the effective change in the cornea, ruling out discentered or incomplete ablation, post eczema ecstasia or other changes. Keratoconus, early screening of keratoconus suspects is one of the most useful roles of topography. Early keratoconus and suspects look normal on slit lamp examination, and the central keratometry 3 mm gives only a limited assessment. Therefore topography has become the gold standard in screening keratoconus suspects. In cases with established keratoconus, the role of topography is paramount for monitoring progression and doing a timely collagen cross-linking, and in contact lens fitting. Post-surgery astigmatism, post-cataract surgery and post-keratoplasty corneal astigmatism can be studied with the topographer and selective suture removal or other interventions can be planned. Surgical planning in cases with astigmatism, limbal relaxing incisions and other methods of topography guided incision placement are used by surgeons to reduce post-operative astigmatism. Effect of corneal and ocular surface disorders, disorders such as pterygium, limbal dermoid, localized corneal scars can cause a change in the corneal topography and thus the monitoring is very useful. Other uses, contact lens fitting, incision placement and intrastromal ring placement in keratoconus, monitoring of ocular versus corneal wavefront. General principles. Corneal topography uses three of the following principles. Placido disc reflection scanning slit Scheimflug photography. Placido disc reflection for curvature analysis. The primary optical aim of cornea is refraction and focusing of the light rays as it acts as a covering lens overall. However, all non-ideal refracting surfaces reflect some light off them. This is the principle used for Perkin J imaging as well in the Placido discs. Placido disc is a device made of concentric rings drawn on a device of a different color, generally white rings on a black background. The first refracting surface of the cornea, more accurately, the tear-film air interface and not the epithelium, also acts as convex mirror and reflects back light in a pattern dependent of the corneal pattern. Topographers use this technique to their advantage. Whereas the original Placido discs were aimed at qualitative keratoscopy, the video keratoscope or the topographer uses mathematical formulae to provide a point-to-point -point quantitative gradient of these subtle changes in topography. Scanning slit elevation evaluation. It is one of the elevation-based methods for assessment of topography. Multiple complementary slits are used to perform an assessment of the corneal surface, figure 2, left. In the orb scan, 40 slits, 20 each from nasal and temporal side, are projected on the cornea to assess 240 points on each slit. The triangulation between the reference slit beam surface and the reflected beam captured by the camera can be used to analyze the anterior and posterior corneal curvature and the pachymetry. Scheimflug principle-based assessment. The non-planar shape of cornea can potentially lead to spurious results and therefore the use of Scheimflug principle in corneal imaging is a welcome new change. Theodrie Scheimflug, an Austrian army man worked extensively on a method for correcting aerial skew distortion in perspective photographs. Even though the technique was described before him, his development of the principle led his name to be associated with the principle. In an ideal scenario, the lens plane and the image plane are parallel. Therefore a linear object will form a plane of focus parallel to the lens plane and thus can be focused totally on the image plane. Consider a situation, when the object is not parallel to the perspective image plane. It will not be possible to focus all the image on a plane parallel to image plane. Thus this may lead to image distortion. 
However, according to the Scheimflug principle, when a planar subject is not parallel to the image plane, an oblique tangent can be drawn from the image, object and lens planes, and the point of intersection is called Scheimflug intersection. Using this orientation, a careful manipulation of the image plane and the lens plane can however lead to a focused and sharp image on the non-parallel object. Interpretation of a topography printout A modern topography printout can be quite daunting for the beginner because of the volumes of data it contains. This is a major shift from the rather simplistic video keratographs and keratometers. A stepwise approach is very handy in interpretation. Step 1. Correctly identify the patient, age and eye. Step 2. Start by looking at the quad or multi-map option as it gives the best visual comparison of the data. Below are the Multimap 4X options in the OrbScan, Bausch & Lomb, NY, Topographer which is Placido and Scanning Slit based and the Cirrus, CSO, Italy, Topographer which is Placido and Scheimflug based. Step 3. Next step is to look at the pseudocolor scale and identify the range and gradient of the values given. Each scan will have a color coding scale for the indices measured. For the absolute topographic map, these will the absolute dioptric value at that point of the cornea. As we are trained to look at patterns for keratoconus or other corneal abnormalities, a tighter color coding scale may enhance patterns or more lax color coding scale will lead to missing out patterns. Step 4. On an absolute scale, the green colors are most representative of normative data and thus a quick review of the scan will help. Too much red is almost always abnormal. The scan should now be mentally compared to patterns seen in keratoconus or other suspected corneal disorder. A classical pattern may be picked up easily, however more experience is required for atypical patterns. Step 5. The next step is to look at the actual numbers on the charts and in the statistics boxes, numerical overlays show thinning and central corneal thickness, apical keratometry, anterior and posterior corneal elevations and specific details at a point, which can be assessed by moving the cursor on that point. The figure below shows the important numerical overlays in a Scheimflug topography printout. Step 6. Compare with slit lamp findings again. It should always be kept in mind that corneal topography can be affected by corneal artifacts and therefore interpretive value is decreased in cases such as nebulomacular corneal opacities, dry eye, corneal neovascularizations and corneal scars.